Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you eight of the most common chord progressions on the guitar. This is the third video in a four part lesson series all about the most common chord progressions. There's a link to a playlist of the full series in the description. In the first lesson of the series, we talked about two chord chord progressions. In the second lesson, we did three chord chord progressions. And in this lesson, we are doing four chord chord, chord progressions and beyond. So mostly four chords and a couple that have more than that. I'm doing kind of a casual approach to this lesson series. I'm going to take these eight common chord progressions. We're just going to go through the list and we're going to learn them with the music theory relationships. We're going to learn the Roman numeral numbers of them and how they work in any key. And I'm just going to kind of jam around, play around, show examples of that, and maybe list some songs that use them. Um, and if you think of any songs that use any of these chord progressions, put them in the comments so we can have a resource down there for a list of songs that use these. Um, but the way I want you to work on chord progressions in this way, and really when you work on any song or hear any song or learn any song, you want to think of what's the harmony doing? Um, in terms of theory. And then you can relate it to how music works in a key and how it functions in tons of other songs that use those same types of ingredients. So let's go through these eight chord progressions, just kind of play through them so we can hear them and have a good time with it. If you want to follow along uh, and you want some chord shapes and the kind of theory information in front of you, I have a chord chart called Chords with Color. There's a link in the description to get that and that will help a lot when I'm talking about chord numbers and jumping around between different keys. Um, that shows all the Roman numeral numbers for chords through five different keys um, and just the chord shapes, the chord diagrams, and then a bunch of variations of those chords. So if you want a resource for that, just grab it with the link in the description. Let's dive in with these. I'm Jared from SoundGuitarLessons.com. On this channel, I talk a ton about music theory on the guitar, mapping out the fretboard, practice strategies and techniques, and stuff like that. I talk a lot about jazz as well as um, how theory relates to popular music and songwriting. So if you're new here, please subscribe. The first progression that we're going to learn is called the do-up progression or the 50s progression, often called those things. It's just one, six, four, five. If we do that in the key of C, we have one is C, six is A minor, four is F, five is G. You can kind of hear it already. It has that kind of 50s do-up thing. Do, 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 do. Now I'm adding this kind of connecting bass line thing, and I talk a lot about it, that in this series. If we start connecting notes or changing qualities of chords, you can get a huge amount of variety um, out of any of these common chord progressions. So, uh, But this is a great one to work on. Six, five, four, uh, four, five, and then do it in various keys. So I did it in C, and I'll often just kind of do it in kind of random places, but if you want an organized way to do it, do it through C, A, G, E, and D. And if you want to be even more thorough and organized, do it with the open string chords and then as well as the movable chord shape. So if I did C here and then A minor and then F and then G, same chord progression but with these movable chord shapes. If we go ahead and do that in A, we have A here, six, four, five kind of mixing around between them. One, six, four, five. So it's just so incredibly helpful to think through the theory in this way. If you don't automatically know where one of these chord numbers are, it makes you think through it and uh, makes you see those relationships. And you're going to start uh, picking up on oh, this song does this and this song does this. And as you change keys around, um, a bunch of ideas are going to come to you. If you like to write songs, that's a huge benefit. If you want to learn more songs, huge benefit. Again, if you recognize any songs from any of these progressions, put it in the, in the description. Um, this progression, um, Heart and Soul, that we've all heard a million times when someone sits down at the piano. Um, Octopus's Garden by the Beatles uses this uh, progression. Uh, Blue Moon, Why Do Fools Fall in Love, and... Uh, Happiness is a warm gun, also by the Beatles. Let's do it in one other key. Let's do it in G. So one, six, four, five, one. So sometimes when I do these examples, I'll try to do a very different kind of rhythmic feel just so we get even more practice and hear it in different contexts. The next progression is one, six, two, five. So, so similar. We're just swapping out the four with the two. If we do, do that, let's go ahead and stay in G for a sec. Um, one, six, two, five. 
five. Okay, so. I made the five chord dominant seven there. So now we have this string of kind of um, resolution six, two, five, one. And this same progression, you can flip it that way, where you uh, start on the six, six, two, five, one, six, two, five, one, or one, six, two, five, Either way, very common progression as well. Let's do that in one other key, just because that's kind of the point of this that I want you to try. So let's do it in E. Uh, so this is one. And then you have to find the six chord. One, seven, six. Okay, six, here's the two chord. And then the five chord is B7. Okay, the next chord progression is the one that maybe everyone's been waiting for when you look at a list of common chord progressions. This one is sometimes on the very top because it is just so insanely ubiquitous. It's one, five, six, four. And I love this progression. I love the way it sounds. I feel, I feel like I'll never get sick of it, but it is kind of overused sometimes. There's always a song in like the top 10 songs that just has this exact progression just used over and over and over again. Um, so that's one, five, six, four. It does sound quite nice, uh, but you know, if, you, if you're a songwriter, you've probably written songs with this, you know, several times, and we've all heard this a million times. So one, five, six, four. Okay, so work on it through a, diff a few keys. That's G with those movable voicings. If we do that with uh, the open string voicings, one, five, six, four. So great practice on the guitar. Let's do it in the key of D. Okay, so we'll go one, five, six, four, one. Doing it with open strings now. Five, six, four. So really makes you think through the relationships and it's very handy. You might have seen videos of this progression being used and then people singing like, a hundred different songs over it as it just goes. Um, I have a little list here that I made. Um, no Woman, No Cry by Bob Marley, Don't Stop Believing by Journey, um, Someone Like You by Adele, Let It Be by The Beatles, uses it partially at least, um, Paparazzi by Lady Gaga. So um, great progression and a uh, great one to know about. And just because a lot of us already know about that doesn't mean that we have it down and seeing those relationships in all the keys, open string chords, movable chords, uh, playing around on the guitar. So work on that. Okay, the next progression is a great one. It's one, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and do this in E, three, Also very familiar, great kind of songwriting uh, chord progression. Um, let's do it in a couple different keys. So let's do it in C. So we got one, three, four, five, one, three. Um, the song Let's Get It On uses that chord progression just over and over throughout that song. Um, if you think of any other songs that use it, put it in, in the comments. Tons of songs use that. Let's do it in, an, in another key. Let's do it in A. Okay, so you find A. Three, four, five. So this is the way that people can kind of show up to a gig and play like a hundred songs or something like that, or learn new songs really quickly for, for gigs. Like, oh, that prog oh, it uses that progression for the bridge and it uses that progression for the, um, for the verse. And oh, this song, um, you know, these getting used to this, um, these kind of as vocabulary items, basically in a way you can start to just, um, piece together the way music works and it depends on the genre and stuff like that but uh, when you're kind of within a genre or playing pop songs or rock songs or something like that or a lot of songwriting songs um, they do start to kind of uh, overlap in this way and that's really helpful again that's how we can kind of say okay i gotta play a gig this week i gotta learn 40 songs for it let me go through write out what the chord progressions are um, you know and you'll have the sheet if you need to or just kind of get used to hearing them really quickly or remembering them easily uh, 
playing a bunch of new songs and a bunch of new material because the actual material that is that the song is made of is actually pretty familiar. So that's why I'm emphasizing so much practicing music in this way. Okay, the next progression is one, oh, one minor, flat seven major, flat six major, and then five, dominant seven. One, seven, six, five. Right, that sounds familiar. Songs that use this, uh, Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys, um, Feeling Good by Nina Simone, uh, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover by Paul Simon, and actually uh, Paul Davids, the guitar uh, YouTuber teacher, uh, huge, amazing uh, YouTube channel. Uh, I'm sure you already know who he is, but he did a great video on that. I'll put a link to his video in the description about uh, Paul Simon's song, 50 Ways to Leave Your Lover, and about that progression and how Paul Simon manipulated the progression. And in the next video in this series, I'm gonna talk about manipulating these progressions to get more variety out of them, which is gonna be cool. So um, that progression is also called the um, I, I just sometimes label these progressions with just the numbers, but it's also called the Andalusian cadence. One, flat seven major, flat six major, five. So let's do it in another key. Um, let's go ahead and do it in E minor. So when you're playing along one string, you can just kind of follow that string, which is nice. Okay, the next progression is three, six, two, five. This is like a string through the circle of fourths, which is very, uh, very common in jazz, jazz progressions uh, because it's having this, what's called a five, one relationship between each chord. Three, six, two, five. And if it wants to go to one, but just three, six, two, five is going through diatonically. Three, through a key, six, two, five um, and every time we're going up a fourth or down a fifth don't worry about that uh, you'll see those relationships as you practice this so i just want you to really practice this so i'm in the key of c three six two five okay and then you can just kind of repeat that um, which is great so let's do it in another key let's do it in a because i talked about if you don't know what to do just go through c a g e d so i just did c so let's do a so three and i'll make these seven so minor seven three minor seven two minor seven i'm sorry three minor seven six minor seven two minor seven five dominant seven one Okay, the next progression is often referred to as a line cliche. It's just such a common um, sound that's used with um, a specific moving line within it that creates this progression. Um, I'll sometimes refer to it as the stairway to heaven progression. So it's the minor chord and then just triad and then minor major seven and then minor seven and then minor six. And that minor six often will, will resolve to the four chord. Okay, so this this is kind of, I kind of did it in this place where Stairway to Heaven is played, where you can um, you know move that melody on top as well, but just as the chords underneath minor minor major seven, and this has the moving note on the bottom, um, but it can be anywhere, right? So if we do it without the moving note on the bottom, we just do it internally. Now it's that moving line, that line cliche thing is inside in the middle of the chord. And I like it there too. Okay, so it's the four chord chord progression and it can resolve to that G minor um, or not. So what if we do that in, I mean, any other key? With these two things that I just did, you can obviously just move it around. Um, which is nice. And if you're using like open string chords and you do that A minor major seven, A minor seven, we kind of run out of space to move the line. So it makes you have to find another voicing of it somewhere. A minor, A minor major seven, A minor seven. And then, uh-oh, how are you gonna do A minor six? Because that moving line got to the open string. Da -da. How, where are you gonna move it? You have to work out where that, where that voicing is to keep that line going. So now you can hear that continuing through. So um, let's do it in like D minor. And we could do that right here in D minor, which would be nice. And 
And that's great because you get to move that whole line all on that one string. It's kind of in there. Another great way to do this is um, with the, well, I already did it with the lowest note moving, but you can do it really kind of with the, with the bass note moving. This is very common. So I did it in G minor now, where this is a complete G chord. Root, flat three, and five. Root, flat three on the third fret, and five of the chord on the third fret. On string six, three, and two. Now, I'm kind of keeping that upper part of the chord up there. If you want a complete chord up there, you could even hold that. So you could go. Lot of ways to play around with these things. A couple famous jazz ballads that use this, My Funny Valentine and In a Sentimental Mood. Those are great tunes to work on if you're playing around with jazz standards at all. Okay, the next progression is the canon progression, the canon in D progression. So this is kind of an extension of the one, five, six, four, but uh, it, it elongates it. One, five, six, three, four, one, four, five. So quite a long one, right? This is where we're going beyond four chords. Um, doom, doom, doom. We'll just kind of listen to it here. Kind of hear the canon, the Pocket Bells canon in D in there, right? Um, also, Green Day used this for Basket Case, uh, famous song from like 1994, or 95, or something. So, just using this kind of punk rock power chord thing. Um, and then a song recently by Maroon 5, it was like a radio hit, um, uses that progression and actually just pretty much cops a big portion of the Pachelbel canon in D melody as well, which is just kind of silly sounding to me in a song like that. So, oh, that song is called Memories by Maroon 5. So this is a great progression to work on. Let's do it in C. One, five, six, three. So recognizable, really great to work on these. Let's do it in D. One, five, six, three, four, one, four, five. I made the five dominant seven there, starting to add sevens or extensions to some of these uh, chords. It's a way to get some variety out of it, which we're gonna talk about in the next video. If you want that resource to help you follow along with practicing all these chord progressions in different keys, just grab my chord chart called Chords with Color with the link in the description. There's also a list in the description of every chord progression that we're talking about in this video with a link to where I talk about it in the video. So if you get that chord chart, you can have it in front of you and then just kind of go back to that list and kind of play around with it, look up the chord shapes on the diagram, play with that. If you, found, if you might find that useful, awesome. If not, totally cool as well. I'm looking forward to doing one more video in this series, number four of the series that's gonna come out next week. And I'm gonna talk about using all the progressions that we've done so far in these first three videos, which is 20 progressions, 20 common chord progressions to get used to. And we're gonna talk about how to manipulate them and add variety to them by understanding extensions and changing the chord qualities and awesome ways that we can get even more leverage and make these more personal to us, get creative with them. That's gonna be fun, adding variations to these. That'll be next time. Thanks so much for watching. Take care, happy practicing, and see you then.